Here's a compound interest problem. A certificate of deposit, or a CD, is an account that many banks offer that often comes with a higher interest rate, but the investment can't be touched for a specified length of time. Suppose you deposit $3,000 in a CD that earns 6% interest, and this interest is compounded monthly. How much will you be able to withdraw at the end of 20 years? So first of all, we need the compound interest formula. The compound interest formula says that the future value F equals the present value P times 1 plus the interest rate R divided by N, and that quantity is raised to the power of N times T, where T is time measured in years. N is the only new part in this formula, and N is the number of times per year that interest is compounded. Since interest is compounded monthly in this example, that's 12 times per year, so n is going to be 12. So n is always number of times per year that interest is compounded. And you get that from the problem statement. So all we do is fill in the pieces that we know. We know how much money we have today. Today we deposit $3,000 into the account. We know that the interest rate is 6%, so we write that as 0.06. Remember that we write interest rates as decimals in these problems. N, as we just said, was 12. So we put that in the denominator there and in the exponent. And then T is 20, because we're doing this for 20 years. The only unknown is the future value F. And that's what we'll find when we evaluate this right side of the equation. So to do this, I'm going to start by simplifying what's inside the parentheses. So first I'll type in 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12. So what's inside the parentheses is 1.005. Then what's inside the parentheses gets raised to the power of 12 times 20. Make sure that you pay attention to the order of operations here. First I do what's inside the parentheses, then I do the exponent, before I do the multiplication. So remember your order of operations or else you'll get um, very wrong answers on these questions. So I take that answer and raise it to the power of 12 times 20. Now I can do this a couple of ways. I can type in raise to the power of and then in parentheses type 12 times 20. If instead of doing that I just typed in to the power of 12 times 20 what the calculator will think I want to do is raise this answer to the power of 12 and then multiply that by 20, which isn't what I want to do. What I want to do is raise it to the power of 12 times 20. So make sure you put that in parentheses. The other way to do this is to multiply 12 times 20 separately and just raise it to the power of 240, which is the product 12 times 20. Either way, you find that that's 3.31, etc. So that is everything after the 3,000. Everything in parentheses raised to the power. So now I'm ready to multiply that by 3,000 to get my final answer. So the final answer is that the future value is $9,930.61. So notice a few things here. First of all, we had to pay attention to the order of operations and be careful in the way that we typed it in to the calculator. The other is that I kept using the answer from the previous line rather than retyping it in. So instead of typing in 3.31 times 3000, I just typed in times 3000 and the calculator pulled up the previous answer. The reason I did that was to avoid round off errors and we'll talk about that in a later example. But for this example we notice that the answer is that after 20 years this account will hold $9,930.61. So it will have more than tripled based on this compound interest process.